Um, I'm still working on grading your DBQs from yesterday, so if you notice that your gradebook is not uh, showing a score yet, just uh, be patient. Uh, they're still being graded, and uh, I will update those gradebooks uh, today, uh, really soon today. So um, I wanted to point out to you also that in the download section, there is no assignment for today. So um, what you're going to want to do is take a look at what's in there. I put an opportunity for you guys to get extra credit uh, for the previous uh, little section of the Protestant Reformation. There are some documents in there. If you'd like to analyze those for extra credit, you can. Uh, and then just submit them to your social studies folder when you're uh, finished with them. You can earn up to five points per document. And there's four documents in there for you to analyze if you want to do it. Uh, you're not required to. Uh, it's only an extra credit opportunity, but I, I, I like giving you opportunities to uh, earn a little extra by doing a little more work and a little more analysis and uh, just deepening your understanding of the chapter we just finished, which was the Reformation. So uh, go ahead and check that out. If you want to do it, it's in there for you. And then when you're done, just let me know uh, so I can go in there and take a look at it. Today we're starting a brand new section of the Renaissance. So um, we're still in this time period that we call the Renaissance. We're just now uh, analyzing a different element of society during this time. So we just talked about a religious aspect of society with the Protestant Reformation. So we saw Luther and his uh, uh, basically his rebellion against the church and how it led to other uh, people in other places in Europe to, to do the same thing and to start Protestant denominations. So what we're going to talk about now is the scientific revolution. And uh, this is actually a pretty short chapter, but it's really important. It's really fun, but it's really important. But um, what you're going to want to uh, think about here is how our central uh, essential question throughout the year uh, has played into every single unit, and particularly this one. You know, how do cultural and technological advances impact civilizations. So we're going to see just how these um, advances, mostly in uh, science for this particular section, really impacted Europe and changed it forever. Um, and you already kind of saw it with the Reformation. Now, you may not think, well, what does science have to do with the Reformation? Well, what was the main catalyst for the Reformation? The printing press, right? And the printing press was a technological advance, right? A scientific achievement, if you will. And it was very much the entire reason why the Reformation was able to grow as fast as it did and spread as fast as it was able to spread. And without it, really, what you had was a John Wycliffe situation. So you can see how um, these advances really have a serious impact no matter where they are occurring. And in this case, it was in uh, the, the uh, area of religion. So now we're going to talk about science. And the scientific achievements in Europe at this time are just incredible. We've talked about achievements in other parts of the world uh, in terms of uh, their golden ages and things like that and the things that they were able to accomplish. Uh, in Europe, it's going to be no different. It's going to be just as phenomenal, and it's going to change the world like never before. And um, basically what you're seeing is people getting more curious about the world around them. People are getting more educated, and as they're getting more educated, they want to learn more and more and more. They, they just get this, this passion for learning that they can't um, seem to fulfill, so they keep trying to learn more and more and more about as many things as they can. And uh, in the areas of science, it's going to be uh, an explosion of learning and achievement. Now, I remember in class when we talked about how we have everything that they're learning from uh, past generations, right? And then what they do is they learn about it as much as they can until they've gone to the point where they can't learn anymore. And then what do they do? They start building on top of that, okay? That's what's going to happen rapidly with this section, the scientific revolution. So uh, basically what they're doing is they're wanting to learn more about everything the world around them. Everything they look at, everything they, they think about, they want to figure it out. They want to know how it works. 
They want to know why it is the way it is, right? They look at uh, like an animal and they're like, how does that animal function, right? Why does it do the things it does? Why does this plant, why does this flower grow? Why does this crop grow the way it does, when it does, where it does? Why, why does this do that? Why does that do that? Why does my arm do this? And why does it not do that, right? Like they want to learn about everything. And then one of the most significant achievements of this time is not looking around, but looking up, looking up into the heavens. Now they've been looking to the heavens forever, right? Praying to God and, and just worshiping in that way. But now they're looking up and they look and they see all these beautiful stars at night. They see the moon up there and they're starting to ask questions about that. It's only natural. And the more and more questions they end up asking, the more passionate they get about finding the answers. And it's, it's finding those answers that really just explodes. <clears throat> that process is what makes this whole section just fascinating. Them seeking those answers. And they're going to figure out a way to find those answers. Right? Uh, we're going to talk about a guy named Bacon. Yeah. And uh, they're just looking at the world that's surrounded them their entire lives, forever, and they're starting to see it differently because they're now learning about it. You know, you can look at something over and over and over again, but it's when you learn something new about it, you never can look at that thing the same again. Now, you all know what I'm saying here. Have you ever looked at something and seen it a million times or looked at a movie and seen it a million times, or seen anything, a painting, a, 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 anything, and you've seen it so many times, but then all of a sudden you learned one new thing, maybe more, but maybe you just learned one new thing about it, or maybe you watched your favorite movie, and you learned something about that movie that you didn't know before, all the millions of other times you saw it, and it was never the same. Every time you looked at it, it was a completely different experience than it was before, and it was there the whole time. And you saw it, you looked at it a million times, but you learned one new thing about it, and it changed it completely. All of a sudden, you were looking at the same thing, but you saw something completely different. Right? Are you having trouble picturing this? Well, if we were in class, this would be a lot more effective, but I'm going to do my best here for you guys. So, let's see. Let's give you an example. How about this? Now, when you look at this picture, what do you see? Now, a lot of people would say, well, I see, a, I see a duck. Do you see a duck? Right? You see, like, here's his bill right here. Right? Here's his bill. Here's his eye. Right? This is his head right here. Yeah. But if you look at it carefully and you observe and you look at it in a different way, you might see a rabbit, right? Here's the front of the rabbit's face right here. Here's the rabbit's eye, and here are the rabbit's ears. So I'm looking at one thing, but I'm seeing a completely different thing. You guys see where this is going? Okay. Uh, let's try another one. Look at this one. What did you see first? Did you see the trees and all the leaves and all the branches? Or did you see a tiger? Did you see what looked like a tiger coming at you? Right? Now, this is kind of like society here. Society, some people might look at these things and see one thing. And then other people might look at it and see the other thing. And it's not until you figure out why they see something you don't, that you start to see it, right? You may not have seen the tiger until I start to explain, look, here are his eyes, here is his eye, here's his uh, nose right here, and here's his mouth down here, here's one paw stepping forward, right? And you can see his ears right here. Now, you may not have seen it before, you might have seen it right away, right? Different people see different things, right? Some people see it right away, some people don't. How many of you guys saw the tiger right here sitting under the tree? Right? It's crazy. Once you learn something, you see it completely differently. Now, these have been kind of easy, right? I got another one that's pretty cool. This one's pretty cool, right? 
So I'm curious, how many of you saw the old man first? And how many of you saw the man and the woman in the in the archway first? Right? See, different people might see different things at first, but it's not until they look at it closely and examine it more that they start to see more than just what they saw previously. Right? So you could see here's the man and here's the woman in the archway. But you might have seen this is the man's eye, this is his nose, his mustache and beard, and this is his hair, right? And she is right here, but it also looks like this is his ear. And with the shading in the street, it looks like this is his shoulder and this is his arm, sort of just uh, putting his hand over his heart, so to speak. How about this one? What did you see first? Did you see the old man looking back at the old woman? Or did you see the two mariachi guys sitting there in the uh, middle? Do you see both now? Okay, are you starting to see what I mean? You can look at something and see it one way a lot. Every time you see it, you see this. Every time you see it, you see this. Every time you see it, you see this. But you learn one new thing. Right? You learn that, look, here's the eye of the old man, here's the eye of the old woman, his arm is her nose, his arm is her nose. This crevice right here are the mouth of both of them, right? The knee represents their chin, right? Now these have been kind of easy so far. Sometimes, what word did you see first? Did you see good? Or did you see evil? Or did you see both right away? Okay, just so you guys uh, will will be able to see it. Inside the white part is the word evil, E V I L. But on the outside, it's G O O D. Good. So you have good and evil. Pretty crazy, huh? This one is always a hard one for people. This is the one I always get a lot of people. They don't see it, okay? Now, what you're looking at here, first of all, what did you see first? Right? Think about what you see when you're looking at this. Do you see an old woman or do you see a young woman? See, this is one This is one that gets really tricky with people. People are... Uh, Struggling with this one, I bet, when they're looking at it. Uh, some of you guys probably have seen this before. Some of you guys probably haven't. But uh, this is always the one that I get a lot of uh, mixed answers from. Some of people cannot see, for the life of them, the old woman. And some of them cannot see the young woman. Okay? But you see one of them. Which one do you see? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you first the young woman. Okay? So the young woman, you have the big coat right here, right? She's wearing a big coat, big fur coat. Here is her neck, right? And then right here, she's got like a choker necklace on, right? Really tight necklace around her neck right here, right? Right here, you see her jawline. You see her head. She's almost turned away from us. So she's looking away from, uh, from, from us right now. And this is her jawline. This is her chin right here. And then we're going up. This is her cheek, right? And then you see her nose kind of poking out a little bit, right? And then you see like what looks like an eyelash kind of sticking out there. And this is her eye socket, right? And then you see her curly hair right here. And it looks like she has some kind of hat with like some fancy thing on it, right? It's got a nice little feather right here. Do you guys see the young woman? Do you see the old woman? This is one people struggle with, okay? So I'm going to show you the old woman now, okay? I'm curious, by the way, after you watch this video, tell me if you if you see it or if you still don't see it, okay? I'm really curious to see who who is um, just unable to see one of them because I just love showing it to you guys, okay? So the old woman, here we go. This right here, this curve right here, this is her chin, Okay? And then as you come up, this line right here, this is the mouth. This is her mouth right here. 
Okay. Now she's got the same coat on and she's got like a hood over her head. This is her mouth. And then as you come up, this is her nose. Okay, so here's the nose, here's her upper lip, here's her mouth, here's her chin, right? Here's one of her eyes. And then you can see the eyelash part of her other eye right here, right? So these are her eyes, this is her nose, this is her upper lip, and this is her mouth. Down here is her chin, right? And she's got hair kind of covering it up here. Again, with a, a hat and sort of like a hood covering it up. Do you guys see both now? I'm curious, this is kind of a hard one. Some people uh, look at this for a long time. Now in class, what would happen is I would be showing this picture and gradually as I kept explaining it, you know what I'd hear? I'd hear randomly every few seconds, oh, I see it, oh, now I see it, now I see it. That's the reaction I'm looking for, right? Because that's what's going on during the scientific revolution, right? It's people looking all around them at the world and things of the world and they're examining them and they're trying to figure them out. They're trying to understand them and everything they can about them. And now after they learn things about these many different things that they're, they're, they're studying, now they start looking at the same thing they'd seen all along and they see it completely differently, right? The world changes because when you look at something and you learn something new about it, all of a sudden that thing is never the same again, right? Like this picture, no matter what you saw first, it'll never be the same because now you can't not see the old woman or vice versa. Now you can't not see the young woman. Whereas before you probably stared at it for a while and was like, I can't see the old woman or I can't see the young woman, right? And I'm waiting for that, oh, I see it, I see it moment, right? Because in class, it always happens and it's always fun for me because that's exactly what I'm hoping to get out of it. So it kind of, you know, it's unfortunate that I can't be in class with you to hear it, but that's what should be happening. I'm curious if that was you or not, okay? The last one I want to show you is this one. Now this one's pretty cool. Looks, it looks like this guy just ate like a like a sour Skittle, right? See how his mouth is kind of like like he's sucking on a, a sour candy, right? His eyes are kind of squinted, right? Now you're not going to see anything other than the guy's face in this one, right? But you know what? Sometimes you got to do in science. Sometimes you got to start from the very beginning. Sometimes you just got to start from scratch. And maybe what it takes is looking at it from a different perspective. Right? Sometimes you got to look at something from a different angle to finally understand it or to see what you couldn't see before. So let's try it with this one. What if we looked at this from a different perspective? What if we looked at it from this perspective? So again, this is where, oh, I see it, I see it. This is where that starts to happen. I'm wondering if you guys see it yet. Because this, this man's face, when I turned it upside down, now, do you see the puppy holding the bone? Okay, here's the puppy's tail right here. Here's his ear, one of his ears, right? Here's the top of his head. Here's another ear. Here's his nose down here. Here's his face. Here are his eyes, right? Here's his paws gripping the bone right here in the middle, right? Here's his feet down here. You see, for those of you that didn't see it right away and had to have me uh, show you how it was a dog holding a bone, that's what is going to happen with this entire little section here, right? So we're going to have um, people questioning the world around them, everything. They're going to be looking at everything, and they want to learn about it. They want to know how it works. They want to know why it is the way it is. They want to learn as much as they can, and in doing that, they're going to... In doing that, they're going to 
see things completely differently. And they're going to have new knowledge in all different types of fields, mathematics, astronomy, uh, optics, and uh, all sorts of things like uh, they're going to invent new types of science. Like you're going to have uh, uh, Isaac Newton invent calculus. You're going to have all sorts of uh, achievement in anatomy. You're going to have achievement in chemistry and achievement in you know medicine. And then you're going to see an entirely new way of learning about the natural world develop out of Europe, out of this time. It's a completely new way of trying to learn about things that's going to forever change how we all learn about things, right? So all you have to do today, after you've watched this video, of course, is watch the other video that I've posted, uh, Copernicus and the Scientific Revolution, okay? You don't have any assignment to do. You're just sitting there watching some optical illusions and the video on Copernicus. And then you're done for the day. Uh, tomorrow we'll have something new. But today all you have to do is sit and watch and uh, just kind of understand that basically what we're going to be talking about right now is, is, is this rise in learning. It, it breeds curiosity. And this curiosity needs to be uh, addressed. Right? They have to quench this thirst. And in quenching this thirst, they're going to learn so much about the natural world. And it takes looking at something you may have seen so many times before, but looking at it from a different perspective, learning new information about it. And in doing so, you're going to see things completely different. You'll never see them the same again. They'll never be what they once were. They're going to always and forever be something more now because you learned more about it. And the process of how you go about learning more about it is what this particular section is all about. Okay, So make sure you guys are um, staying up to date with your videos, staying very vigilant, checking the announcements. Okay, uh, Make sure you're, if you're not caught up, caught up on all your work that you're getting caught up. Okay, I know that some people are falling a little behind. You guys need to make sure you catch up. Okay. You don't want to fall behind in the fourth quarter. Okay, this is a time you want to make that push to the finish line and finish strong. Okay. So that does it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, again, if you have any comments or questions about the optical illusions, send them my way. I'm always interested in hearing it. Again, I was looking for that. Oh, I, I see it. I see it. I'm looking for that moment. But uh, yeah, so just watch these two videos and then uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, but first, finish all your work and then enjoy the rest of your day. Take care, guys.